All right, let's get it. This is Season 2, Episode 7 cut content. The actual reason behind Subaru's capture. Now, my understanding is that his miasma getting thicker every time and the checkpoint being the witch's graveyard and, you know, Garfield smelling that and becoming more suspicious with each loop and why he was acting differently in each loop. I thought that is the reason. A lot of the discussion surrounding this episode has been mainly focused on the heartfelt ending revolving around Subaru and Otto. I ain't gonna lie to you. What this whole scene, Otto like saving Subaru and then Subaru laughing and laughing at the fact that Otto thought that he was a friend. I thought that was kind of fucked up and incredibly rude. Maybe again, it's just a culture difference, but like the entirety just seems so disrespectful and so fucking out of hand that Otto fucking saves you and claims that you're a friend. And Subaru's like, you thought we were fucking friends? And he just starts fucking hysterically laughing. I'm like, Okay. But beyond that was a much more revealing turn of events. One that properly explains why exactly it was that Subaru was taken prisoner. Not only that, but there were also plenty of subtleties ex- Yeah, different last name, different drip, different wand staff thing. I think this is different Ryuzu's man. Included from this episode that go towards further developing the greater mystery. Especially the parts with regards to Garfield's sudden change in attitude, Beatrice's affiliation to the gospel, and mm. Ryuzu's mysterious lookalike. That gospel, bro. Biku having a gospel is a fucking insane revelation. So, let's take a closer look at each of these as we go through what the anime left out from the novels. Let's okay. get started. But first, or do you still not have ad sponsors at this time, any news? Episode 32. No ads. Friend. Covering chapter 2 to chapter 4 of volume 11 of the light novel. Starting in the Forbidden Library, the way Subaru had expressed his anger towards Beatrice was a little bit more violent than what we saw in the anime. His questions and pleas were all made as he held Beatrice's throat as if trying to choke her. Now this whole conversation was so fucked up, but it makes sense because he went in after getting everyone killed, right? Everyone is pretty much dead. He's in shock and he wants to die to make sure that a new checkpoint isn't made. But he gets saved by Biko and he's in shock and he's enraged. So the whole conversation just starts off so rude and <laughs> high, just like hectic. This wasn't just because a new checkpoint could have been set though. Subaru also felt that Beatrice had just taken away the only thing that he was good for. By letting the opportunity to die get away from him, Subaru was now nothing more than the worthless person that he always made himself out to be. I mean, it was quite literally his only job to use his life as if it was expendable whenever it was necessary. But it's scary. And this was certainly one of those moments. But that was something that neither Beatrice nor anyone else would ever be able to understand. So when it became clear that she wasn't going to help him return by death, Subaru smashed the wooden stool that Beatrice was always using as her seat. <laughs> he also threw the fucking tea table thing. So the reason that Biko didn't kill Subaru wasn't that because of the gospel? Because the gospel said, like, don't do it. Based on the dialogue, it seems like that's why Biko was not able to kill Subaru. It's not this personal affection that Biko has for Subaru. He picked it up and threw it against the bookshelf so that he could use one of the sharp fragments to end his life. Okay. Had he completed- See? This was very interesting. Where he tried to kill himself and Biko stops him. And before I knew that she had a gospel, I thought this is more like you need to value your life and people like Juice has gone past me and many people have died and I'm here alone and I don't want you to die in front of me. It could be that. It could be that or, or and or, the gospel telling Biko not to let Subaru kill himself. I don't know. I'm not completely sure what's going on here. The job, then it would have been the third time that he's done this each of which marked a significant point throughout his lengthy journey, and each of which were all for different reasons. The first time was to try and fix something that couldn't be undone. Episode 7? The second was out of remorse so that he could try and save Rem after she'd been taken away from yep. him. And this time it would have been due to his own personal resentment. Indignation that he felt towards himself for not being powerful enough to fulfill the only duty that he had. With not many options left, the only thing Subaru could think in the- He's very harsh on himself, huh? I don't blame Subaru right now for being in this position and not being able to overcome the challenges that's in front of him. The only duty that he had. With not many options left, the only thing Subaru could think in this moment was how much he wanted to die. I mean, death was the only thing left that had any meaning. 
Once again though, Beatrice had intervened to take even that away from him. Yeah, because the gospel most likely told her to do so. She was acting in a way that was far beyond his own comprehension. Because we can't comprehend it. I bet Biko doesn't even comprehend it. It's just this fucking book that tells you to do shit. And you don't even question it. You just have to do it. Because everything Biko does is for her mom. Who the fuck that is? Subaru saw absolutely no reason for her to go to such lengths to stop him from dying. Because of this, there were so many questions that he wanted to ask. But he neither had the energy nor the understanding to do so. This would have been the perfect moment to ask Biko. Razo told me to ask the question, but the presence of mind obviously isn't there. I don't blame him for not being aware of what he could have done here. As he looked around in disarray, that's when he spotted the gospel. The gospel. It's important to note that this book wasn't one that simply fell off the shelves. No, it was being kept hidden within the stool that Subaru had just destroyed. What? Okay, the anime just seemed like it was just on the ground. But in the source material, it was in the stool. Like it was fucking hidden. Biko hid that shit. We destroyed the stool by impulse. And then it showed up. Okay. What this meant was that this book was something that Beatrice had been actively trying Hiding. to hide. Hiding. Yes. A fact that briefly made Subaru completely forget the horrible state that he found himself in. He now wanted to know why Beatrice had what was pretty much the witch cult's bible. And that's the thing. I thought that only archbishops had it. So am I supposed to assume that Biko is an Ek archbishop? Not necessarily. But now my understanding of the gospel needs to change. It's not just archbishops that can have it, right? What, who gave it to her? Her fucking mom? I don't know. But Biko also knows Betrigus in the past. Betrigus is also a spirit. Clearly there's some ties of Biko and the witch's cult that we don't know about yet. As he asked, he recalled what Betelgeuse had previously taught him about the gospel. Uh. How it was pretty much a sacred book that provided the reader with a bunch of prophecies. That's right. Prophecies, huh? See, I thought it was like instructions and guides, which are pretty much prophecies, right? In order to- I thought it's giving them like, you need to do this here and there and like a set of instructions. Sounds like that from Betrigus's lines. Sounds like that from Bieko's lines. Prophecies that the witch cult felt that they had to follow to the letter. Yeah. On the other hand, Beatrice made it clear that the reason she follows the gospel is because of a person she refers to as mother. Mm. In fact, there was actually a line omitted from the anime where Beatrice states that her connection to mother is everything, implying that the thing maintaining that connection was the gospel itself. So I'm gonna assume... <sighs> what, is Biko's mom Satala? If we assume that mother church called... Big Boss, Queen, Sat- Who creates these gospels? I don't fucking know. Did Satala create it? Did a bunch of cult members just create this shit? Like, the origins of the gospels is very interesting. Now, when Beatrice flat out denied the existence of any form of relationship between herself and Subaru- Cap. Cope. I don't believe it. She's using this as an excuse to hide her heart. I don't know why I'm, there's a deep sadness, but within it, right, there is like a- what's it called? There's a deep sadness- that Subaru was able to kind of mend and maybe heal a little bit in season one. I'm pretty sure she has moved her heart, but she's using this instance right now to be extra tsundere and deny that. This was arguably what hurt him the most. I mean, throughout the entirety of season one, we were shown time and time again how Beatrice was the one. Yep. You guys have now spoiled that Biko's mom is a kidnap because of the butterfly eyes. Congratulations. Throughout the entirety of season 1, we were shown time and time again how Beatrice was the one person that Subaru could open up to. Okay. Back when his mind was on the verge of breaking, she was the only person that he could turn to to help him bring himself back together. Yeah. He truly felt that they were at least something akin to friends. But now- They are friends. Memory Snow directly fucking confirms it. There is no way Biko was not affectionate to Subaru. Subaru has shown time after time just valiantly just charging into the hidden library like 100% Biko has been moved. She just using this as an excuse. Subaru knew that that was nothing more than a fantasy on his part. A top 10 anime betrayal, if you will. Subaru would have- Nah, not top 10 anime betrayal. Rachel, top 10 anime betrayal. That, that's top one anime betrayal. Have several of his limbs chopped off before finally awaking in the next loop. After realizing that everything wasn't lost, Subaru couldn't help but feel a significant amount of relief. That's why he was acting this way. It was relief. I thought this was just like fake confidence. His ability to be rational and calm after that loop was 
honestly, like, pretty mind-blowing of, huh, how the fuck is he so calm right now? I thought he's, like, hiding all that shit and he's bottling it up. A significant amount of relief. Despite Amelia suffering through the trial right in front of him, there was a certain comfort that came from seeing it happen. Subaru knew that this was a practically insane point of view to have, but these were just the true feelings that he currently possessed at the moment. By the way, every one of you are retards in chat right now. I want you to know that. Because, <laughs> like, you are a fucking retard, right? 100% you are. You probably just deserve to get two weeks out. But then everyone else beyond that, saying L chatter, you're so stupid that you don't even know that your comments are actively fucking saying the same shit too. Like, how stupid are you guys? Answer me now. Like, like how beyond stupid are you to think that you're helping, but like, like <laughs> the people that think that they're helping is spoiling, and then the people that think they're, you know, uh, fucking, uh, What's it called? Like, correcting the bad guy is also helping with this. Like, you're all retards in chat. Every one of you just shut the fuck up and just watch the reaction. It was after he organized his thoughts that he finally decided to wake up Amelia. His plan of action was to take this next loop one event at a time. Okay. If he truly intended to save everyone, then he needed to figure out what the right sequence of events was. This was something that would only be possible by going through each situation as it unfolded. So, as he held Amelia in his arms with all these new feelings of determination, there was one very important thing that he didn't notice the entire time. What? His, his miasma. His face was completely devoid of any emotion. Hmm. Now, when he exited the tomb, Subaru noticed a few immediate changes to this loop in comparison to the previous one. Garfield moving. Because he had been staring at Ram's face for an unusually long period of time, this prompted her to ask why that was. Of course, we know it's because of her fate from the previous loop. But since that was something that Subaru couldn't tell her, he simply said that it was because she had a pretty face. A <laughs> statement- I mean, Ram is. Even if Ram is a granny, bro. Ram has actually been popping off this season. Even if people think that this season is pretty boring and dull due to the lack of action and being stuck at the sanctuary, every line Ram dishes out just are fucking zingers. The absolute confidence she has in her personality and looks, I fucking love it. That Ram found to be a bit unsettling. It was after this that Subaru would carry Amelia to her bedroom. For some reason, he felt it was the only thing that he could do as a man. I guess the previous loop really had him feeling pretty worthless. <laughs> okay, this is really funny. <laughs> There's a couple scenes that's really funny during the heat of the moment, during this conversation. For sure, Biko slapping the shit out of Subaru with the <laughs> gospel is fucking... I don't know. There's something hilarious about this, right? Little kid slaps the shit out of this mortally wounded guy with the book goes flying. It's just out of just nowhere hilarious to me because it's so, so absurd. Another thing is when Subaru is trying to kill himself with the shard of the glass and Biku overpowers him and just throws Subaru to the side. That was hilarious. Subaru flipping Biku's tea table. That was hilarious. Like, there's some, I don't know. It's just, I think it's just me. I don't think they're trying to be funny. But my twisted sense of humor and just seeing the absurdity of like trying to be serious and take the heat of the moment conversation and like <laughs> getting clapped by a book from a kid is hilarious to me. Worthless. So this was yet another change to the timeline of events. Subaru then left Amelia with Ram while he prepped for his scheduled conversation with Roswell. And this time he had plenty more questions that he wanted to ask, especially regarding Beatrice. If you remember in the last loop, this was a topic that the Roswell question. said he couldn't talk about yet. So, this time Subaru wasn't going to let Roswell avoid the question. As he thought about how he was going to approach the situation, Otto noticed that Subaru looked rather busy. He and didn't calm. just approach Subaru for being calm like how they said in the anime. It's also because Subaru wasn't paying Amelia the attention that he normally would. He even went so far as to directly tell Otto that he didn't have time to be worrying about her. Which was the exact reason why Otto decided to ask him if he was alright. Hmm. Something was clearly affecting his current mental state. <laughs> if only he knew, right? We're getting gangbanged on both sides. Amelia's skill issue, it's taking forever to get out of here. And by the time that we can get out of here with actual allies, people at the mansion are already dead. It's like, at both fronts, back and front, like, we're getting fucked. And most likely, because of Roswell. Something that took greater precedence than even Amelia. 
While this was likely still the after effects of the trauma from the previous loop, anyone who knew Subaru would be able to tell that something about him was off. The only person who couldn't was Subaru himself. Hmm. When Garfield entered the conversation, because he's become so used to looping and you know just fucking facing forward to whatever he needs to do and other characters are suddenly seeing like this shift in personality that that is definitely important remember for like always trying to think from the perspective of outsiders is very interesting because we're always seeing through the eyes of subaru and after he loops we understand everything he went through but to these people it's just this one continuous timeline the successful run and sometimes he just acts 100% differently, right? And it's just like, huh, what, what the hell just happened? ...conversation shortly after. This was such an absurd shift in events that Subaru was convinced that each loop was a different Garfield. Compared to the last... It is a different Garfield. Because this Garfield was not aware of the thickness of the witch's miasma. This Garfield is starting to be like, hmm, this guy's stanky as fuck. And this Garfield is like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this guy has some, like, Archbishop level miasma, what's happening? ...to his opinion... Which confirms that well remember there's never any gauge or meter of how thick the witch's miasma is but since the first garfield never actually made any points and was actually treating us in a favorable way i'm gonna assume that subaru's witch's stench when was the last time he died uh beginning of the season when he killed himself trying to see if it would loop or not right and ever since then the miasma tapers down, and by the time we got to the sanctuary, I guess the witch's scent was so low that Garfield didn't even smell it? I don't know. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Who knows? But clearly, you know, it's not like a, the stacking of the witch's miasma. Remember how in season one we made some videos talking about, like, how does this shit work, right? Is there a new baseline achieved every time? Does it, like, get stronger and then come back down? It seems like it does get stronger with each loop, but eventually comes back down. And the baseline does not shift, or else this Garfield would have definitely made a specific comment and his action would have indicated such. Opinions and actions never really aligned. There was no distinguishable pattern that he seemed to follow. But as we'll soon find out, there's actually a more solid reason behind this change in behavior. In any case, the fact that he wanted to talk to Subaru meant that Otto couldn't be there. As he was now, Subaru still considered Otto to be an innocent bystander. He didn't want him to get caught up in their faction's affairs. His intentions with Otto were to always grant him his audience with Roswell then have him return back to his normal life. That's never happening, bro. <laughs> like, when is he gonna have an audience with Roswell at this rate? Never. Nothing more. He was always just this merchant that Subaru happened to save once. Not really someone that Subaru could see as a friend. So, Otto was a bit dejected that he'd been left out. That's right. Someone what? ...happened to save once. Not really someone that Subaru could see as a friend. That's right. And at the end, when Otto, you know, says all those nice things about Subaru and he starts fucking laughing, I understand that he is laughing at himself. But the way that it's shown, it just looks like Subaru is just straight up laughing at Otto, thinking, you thought we were actually friends? And to a degree, that's what he was saying. But more of like, I didn't think that we were friends because I could have never seen you accepting me as a friend. So, Otto was a bit dejected that he'd been left out yet again, but there wasn't really anything that he could do to change that. Now, as Garfield led Subaru through the Lost Woods, Subaru decided to see if he could get some answers about Frederica. During the last loop, because she had willingly chose to engage Elsa, Subaru was now convinced that she was an ally that could be trusted. Mm -hmm. So, that meant someone else was pulling the strings. Roswell! And this was what he was trying to find out. It was information that he would eventually get from Ryuzu. But before she told him about Frederica, Subaru found it to be a bit suspicious that Ryuzu and Garfield would suddenly trust him. I mean, it had only been half a day since they'd met him. Mm. Yet, here they were sharing information as if he was part of their group. Mm, that should have immediately caught us, you know. It should have definitely raised some flags. Because Garfield smelled that shit. I'm not sure if Ryuzu can smell it, but what Ryuzu um acted upon the biggest reaction from her was when subaru confirmed that he could clear the trial so now it's this connection of huh a non-demi human a non-half human or half blood mixed you know species is going in there with a qualification some fucking how and clear the trial and his witch's scent is on that level of an archbishop something is so off not to mention that it was very odd that ryuzu had changed her outfit between That's the time right. of their previous meeting and, and the last name changed anyway, 
Subaru would then go on to share his idea so long as they promised not to tell anyone else about it. It was a pretty ironic situation considering that Subaru himself found things like promises difficult to uphold. But he went ahead and claimed that someone had recently taught him of their importance. So although other circumstances had led him to hate stuff like packs and vows, he now knew that promises were the one thing that he should try to maintain no matter what. That's interesting how in this world, pact, vows, oath, all that shit is so important. We know how important it is for specifically a spirit's arch user due to the nature of contracts making with spirits and Amelia just being so wholesome. But And Subaru, the outsider that's not from here, just completely says fuck all those pact, vows and shit. I hope he actually continues to do that. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to tell us a story right now. They're like the theme of like how this outsider is beyond just like keeping promises and stuff and goes against the cultures of this world. In any case, it was the news of Subaru being able to complete the trial that led Ryuzu to act. But what was most important to notice here was how exactly Ryuzu had referred to herself. She last had name. sworn upon Subaru's promise under the name of Ryuzu Shima. That's right, that's a different last name from the other Ryuzu that we saw in the black jacket. A different name from the Ryuzu we initially met after the trial. Yeah. If you remember, that one had referred to herself as Ryuzu Vilma. It was a very subtle change that you probably wouldn't have noticed if you weren't paying close attention is to there the So there is multiple Ryuzus. And it, they said that Ryuzu was like a doll-like figure. So I'm gonna assume she's like Idisville, Einsburn from Fate Zero right now. They're a homunculi. They're multiple dolls with souls just like injected into them. Artificial humans created by what? I don't know. Now, Garfield's suspicions of Subaru being part of the witch cult wasn't just because of the witch's scent emitting from his body. What else? Although it was rare, Garfield did know of other normal people who possessed a level of miasma similar to Subaru's. Interesting! Which then could deny, like, like we just talked about how in the first run did Garfield even smell any of the witch's scent? Like, how fast did it taper down after Subaru's most recent loop during the beginning of season two? But I guess it was. Maybe it wasn't all the way down, but still it was at a moderate level where it's reasonable. So that alone wasn't enough to make him act the way that he did. But like, that's crazy. There's more other people with that level of witch's miasma that's not even from the cult? Oh, go again. Hold up. Although it was rare, part of the witch cult wasn't just because of the witch's scent emitting from his body. Although it was rare, Garfield did know of other normal people who possessed a level of miasma similar to Subaru's. Why would normal people have the miasma? I don't know. I'm assuming normal implies they're not part of the witch's cult. How do people even get the witch's miasma? I feel like it has to do with witch factors. And then you're gonna say, What do you mean, bro? In the beginning, Subaru never had the sloth witch factor. Let me cook. Let me cook, bro. In the beginning, loot seller. Remember, the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. I still believe Subaru made some sort of pact, some sort of promise with Satala. And in that moment, Satala gave him the <laughs> witch factor of envy, and therefore the authority of envy is returned by death. If you go with that assumption, then it does make sense why Subaru does have the miasma. Now, why does the fucking miasma get stronger with each loop? That I have no answers for. But if we're going to assume that a miasma originates from, I don't know, the witch factor, maybe that makes sense. Let's consider a situation where witch factors are not the source of the miasma. Then what is it? A connection with the witch? Well, we're connected to Satala in a way, right? And then if you assume the other like cult members, not an archbishop, right? We know Betrigus has the sloth witch factor, but I don't think the fingers have witch factors, right? At least I don't think they do. I feel like they're just regular dudes that just showed up. And some of them have, the fingers specifically have shown enough witch miasma to actually be possessed, right? That's how Betrigus chose the fingers based on like their strength of witch's love. And they were, he was able to possess their bodies, shit like that. But that is a very interesting question, right? Like where the fuck is the origin of the witch's miasma? Is it because of a witch factor? If so, can we assume that Subaru already has a pre-existing witch factor? Because remember, Satala made in, made, uh, it, it's presumed that Satala has already made a pact with Subaru because of what Echidna says before Echidna's pact with you know, Subaru and the fact that the memories are erased. I could definitely see a loop where... And, and the fact that like Sa in Subaru, Satala memory seems to be like erased. Right? Subaru literally has an indescribable feeling of love towards Satala. 
after he died in episode 15, and then we went to Shadow Garden, right? All those things hints that Subaru Satala relationship has already happened a long time ago, but we've forgotten those memories, and now... I don't know. I don't know. There is also the Dark Element affinity. True, 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 right? What do we learn in Arc 2? Uh, Subaru's affinity for, like, shadowy shit, but... Um, the Witch is my ass. I mean, it's, it's called the Witch's Scent. We know of which factors. I don't know. That's enough speculating from my end. Also, uh, the Al stuff. Yeah, I think the we. I think the assumption we're going on right now is Al's miasma is not really Al's miasma, but more of his helmet's miasma, which could be hinted that the helmet is the meteor of the witch from Volakian Empire. I don't know. Just a guess. So that alone wasn't enough to make him act the way that he did. What was, was the way that Subaru said he wanted to take the trial. Subaru was saying that everything was all for the sake of Amelia. Mm -hmm. Doing the trial in her place was something that he simply felt was best for her. At least, that's what he was trying to say anyway. Short term, yes, it's what's best for Super Amelia. But long term, no. Nah. We need to address the root cause. Simply solving her problems right now is not going to change her. But it was as he said these words that not an ounce of concern could be found. Garfield found everything Subaru was saying to be nothing but empty. Hmm. Devoid of emotion just like his face when he left the tomb. Because he's treating this like a speedrun. Because he's looping. And he knows what's gonna happen. Yeah. Makes sense, right? This guy has died over and over again. And is now trying to problem solve and trying to approach this kind of like a game. And if you do that and Garfield's like, Why the fuck do you not have these like emotional ties? Because we've gone through it so many times that we're just, come on, let's fucking get out of here. It makes sense. The calm demeanor that Otto had previously called him out on had now proven to be the very thing that caused mm. Garfield to take action against him. That is another layer of suspicion I could have never guessed. Subaru's lack of, like, emotional attachments because he's able to just loop and just, like, do it again and again. And other people thinking, hmm, you are just doing this shit so carelessly. Well, not carelessly, but doing it like you don't really give a fuck, like you don't, you have no emotional attachment and your miasma is strong, like that is very suspicious. Ever since leaving the tomb, Subaru's lack of emotion had been the sole reason for every change in this loop. And with the way he was now, Garfield saw no difference between Subaru and Roswell. Interesting. They both spoke with words that were meant to show compassion for others, but... Yeah, bro, Suba Wall Theory. Y'all know the Suba Wall Theory? No, I don't think the Subaru theory is legit. I think the theory is that Roswell and Subaru are the same person. <laughs> that somehow, the Roswell is a Subaru that's older, and I don't know how to, I don't actually fucking, but there's a lot of parallels, absolutely. There is a lot of parallels, right? And the biggest evidence of them all, memory snow, fucking snow statue competition, right? <laughs> Ram and Rem statue being a hybrid of Subaru and Roswell. We are partners in crime, Subaru. Accomplices, even. Oh, we share a secret. Now, I got some additional facts. Let's add to the theory. The theory of Roswell so far has been that I think that he can regress along with Subaru because he seems to be confident in each failed run as well, and he uses Subaru as a pawn. He's declared that he's been intentionally hiding so that Subaru can handle the witch's cult, and that's where the theory has ended last time. But... Now, with the existence of Gospels on Bieko, I think we should assume that everyone has a fucking Gospel, bro. And then, this answers my logical inconsistency in Arc 1. How the fuck could have Roswell hired Elsa to, save, to make Subaru save Amelia if he didn't know who Subaru was? If Roswell has a Gospel, and if the gospel told him to do that, then I think that makes sense. Roswell has a gospel and he's regressing alongside with Subaru seems to now cover my logical inconsistencies. Now, Elsa being hired in Arc 1 and Arc 4 does make sense. Unless Elsa <laughs> also has a gospel. <laughs> Never was hired by Roswell. Elsa too is reading off the gospel, the instructions. And is simply acting according to my 
I don't fucking know. Here's the interesting thing with the gospel, bro. Everybody has a... If you go in with the theory that everyone has a gospel, now it answers a lot of questions on why everyone seems to be taking these actions and none of it makes sense, right? Like, people are just following orders without understanding why, and it makes sense. Like, everybody has a gospel, bro. Reinhardt has a gospel. Mm-hmm. That's how he knew how to show up at the loot cellar. No, no, no. Fe you, you don't think it's weird? No, I think Amelia tipped Reinhardt off anyways. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, um, Priscilla has a gospel. And that's how Priscilla knew immediately how to show up right in front of Subaru with the dragon carriage in the beginning of the royal selection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else has a gospel? Let's think. Let's think. The wise men of the council. That's right. The dragon kingdom of Lugunica. That's right. Miklotov. Right? The wise men. They ain't wise. They a bunch of fucking senile dumbasses. They can't even wipe their asses. They just reading off the fucking gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything makes sense if everyone has a gospel. <laughs> Neither showed any interest in anything but themselves. It was this plus the lingering scent of the witch that led Garfield to the conclusion that Subaru couldn't be trusted. Okay. It also now made sense of why Garfield's attitude changed with every loop. You see... Every time Subaru returns by death, the density of miasma being emitted Strong. from his body increases even further. Yeah. So, because the miasma was at its thinnest during the first loop, Garfield was more inclined to be accepting of Subaru taking the trial. Exactly, right? Because he knows that there's normal people with those levels of miasma. Now, I, what we don't know is why are there specific people that can sense the miasma? Like, that is the weirdest thing. We have no logic or a pattern of behavior. Rem can smell Subaru's miasma, but Ram can't. What the fuck? Biku can, because she's a spirit, but I don't think every other spirit can do it. Like, Garfield can smell Subaru's miasma. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if Frederica can smell it. You know? Like, there is no pattern of behavior. There is no, like rules that I'm picking up on to see who can actually detect this shit. It seems all fucking random. But it's because that miasma grew with every time he died that the level of distrust that Garfield had towards Subaru increased as well, mm -hmm. resulting in those significant changes of behavior that Subaru found to be odd. It was also likely what happened with Rem back when he was first starting out. Exactly. The Rem was getting more suspicious because with every loop, his stench gets stronger and stronger. But like, why Rem and not Ram? Because she has a horn? I don't fuck. And Ram doesn't? I don't know. The difference with her, though, was that... Ram, Ram does not have a horn, and Frederica is a quarter instead of half. So what is the connection here? Because Rem is not a half-blood. Rem is full Oni. But she still has a horn, and Ram doesn't have a horn. Frederica is a quarter beast, but Garfield is half-beast. I cannot make some sort of logical connection between the differences of Frederic, the, like the siblingship between Garfield and Rem right now. And yeah, and, and, and all the cult members, I just know that they just have an understanding of the miasma because they're closely tied with the witch. If you are part of the cult, I just assume that you can sense the miasma. So non-humans? No, not just non-humans. It seems like some's got a threshold, like half of a non-human can, but a quarter non-human can't. Amelia should be right, but Amelia's never commented on that either. Witch beasts are drawn to uh, the miasma. Yes, we know that. But it's just like... Ugh. There doesn't seem to be, like, any... Like, again, like, a logical pattern of behavior that is consistent with each character. Some sort of blessing or divine protections? Good question, right? Maybe some people are just born with the innate ability to sense the miasma. I don't know. That she was a bit better when it came to maintaining her composure. As sort of. Garfield, it was clear that Subaru's relationship with him was only going to get worse the more times he died. Uh oh. So this just added a brand new layer of complexity to the entire Boom. situation. That's right. Garfield transformation scene incoming very soon. If Garfield's level of hostility increased with every time he returned by death, then this it would guy's, eventually- This guy's just fucking spoiling at this point, but I don't really care. We get to the point where imprisonment wouldn't even be- that's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> come on, come on, bro. Like, I don't mind, because, you know, it's gonna happen, but like, come on, man. An option. 
instant death. Come is going on, to be man! I'm not looking. Making this yet another obstacle to add to the. Let me read some comments. Hold up! Hold up! Is there anybody? Spoilers. I gotta say, man, your videos are amazing. Keeping everyone in the loop with the cut content while keeping a solar spoiler free. <laughs> spoiler free? Am I the only one that did it? What the? Everyone's already seen ahead, I guess, huh? All right, whatever. Fuck me, I guess. Ever expanding list of them. I mean, altogether, we now had Amelia dealing with the trial, Roswell yeah. being absolutely useless, Puck being unresponsive. Elsa and the Mystery Beast Tamer attacking the mansion, mm -hmm. Frederica's manipulation. And the Mystery Beast Tamer is most likely the purple haired girl because what was happening in Arc 2, Bald Shaman Dog was controlling the Maju, but we now know that Maju can be controlled if their horn is broken. The Bald Shaman Dog, the bald spot is the broken horn, presumably by the Mystery of Arc 2, which is a purple haired girl that's missing that was associated with the Bald Dog. But the Guilty Low showing up, there's a logical inconsistency there because the horns are not snapped off and I wouldn't know how Melly is able to control Guilty Low without the horn being snapped. So I'm not sure how far my guess goes now. Elsa and the mystery beast Tamer attacking the mansion, Frederica's manipulation, Petra getting involved when she doesn't have to, mm. Rem's eternal sleep, and finally Beatrice's association with the gospel. Yep. All of which Subaru had no idea how he was going to approach. I got no clue either. He was stuck in this prison. Well, I do have an idea. I still feel like we need to go back to Biko and ask the question. All of which Subaru had no idea how he was going to approach, especially now that he was stuck in this prison. While left alone in the darkness and silence, numerous emotions swirled as Subaru tried to figure out a solution. And this is the worst part, because now we're like blinded and we can't even kill ourselves. A fate worse than death where we're just wasting time and potentially a new checkpoint could be made. And I'm thinking like in the future, this could definitely happen, huh? Like imagine Subaru gets captured and a bunch of horrific shit happens and so much time passes and a new checkpoint is made. Because like we don't know exactly the rule set of the checkpoints. It seems very spontaneous and arbitrary. It seems like if there's any some sort of challenge and you overcome it, at some point, a checkpoint will be made. But it's kind of scary to think about. Various images of people began to emerge in his head. And with each one, so too came a different emotion. There was his love for Amelia, then distrust for Roswell. Mm. Remorse for Beatrice, then anger for Garfield. Yeah, fuck you, Garfield. You are just... And that's the worst part. <laughs> Assuming that Roswell has hired Elsa, right? Yes, we can blame Roswell for this because he has evil plans. But Garfield getting in our way is because he's fucking retarded. You know what I mean? It's not like Roswell hired Garfield to do this shit. Right? It's like, now I have to deal with your dumbass because you think that we're sus and, it's, and it, it is our fault. But goddamn, Garfield. But most importantly, there was his hatred oh, for Elsa. Elsa. Her situation was the one that was the most mm -hmm. pressing. Mm -hmm. Since evacuation was no longer a possible option, that meant that Subaru needed to find a way to beat her. But Elsa and the Beast Tamer were opponents that Subaru, Ram, and Frederica wouldn't be able to take on alone. Exactly. It's not just Elsa. There's a Beast Tamer melee, most likely. And how do we beat these? Unless we can get some allies from the kingdom, from the Karsten camp, or sorry, Krush camp, Priscilla camp. They're not going to help. Anastasia camp. If we can't get those powerful allies, Reinhardt's not going to show up. Reinhardt, I, I've realized that we can never expect Reinhardt to help us. Basically, Tape has shown Reinhardt's greatness in one episode, in episode 3, right off the beginning of ReZero, and he's now benched forever. Amazing. Uh, the people from the Sanctuary, right? Garfield, I think, could help us, right? Ram can help us. Potentially Roswell, if we can heal him. All that needs to be done is... We need to clear the sanctuary, though. We need to clear the sanctuary as fast as we can and get to the mansion with some powerful friends from the sanctuary. Or else, you know, we get some powerful friends outside of sanctuary. But at this point of the story, like, we cannot do this alone, right? The people at the mansion are not enough. So we need to figure out a way to convince Garfield that we're not sus. We need to figure out a way for Emilia's skill issue to be handled. Then we can take the people to the sanctuary, we can show up to the mansion and fight, but that's gonna be hard. I don't know how to, I don't know the answers to getting Emilia's skill issue overcome. More combat power would definitely be needed if he was going to beat them in a fight. 
but the only three people who were capable of stepping in were unavailable yeah. due to their own circumstances. Exactly. It was a situation to which no matter how much thought was given, no solution could be found. So eventually those thoughts ended up subsiding, only to be replaced by the grim memories of everyone who's ever died due to Season his own one. incompetence. But when those thoughts of regret subsided as well, what remained was a feeling of isolation that would go to make Subaru's imprisonment one of his worst experiences ever. The loneliness that came from being confined in this darkness and isolation made Subaru yearn for death much like how he did the last time. He couldn't help but imagine all the ways in which he could try to end his life. All because of the excruciating pain that came from being helpless and alone. Oh, this scene from Although 15. Although he did have his caretaker, they would never actually say a word whenever they came by. And somehow that just went to make Subaru's isolation even worse. It was as if his existence as a person wasn't even being acknowledged. By the time that Otto had arrived to rescue him, Subaru felt as if it had been centuries since he'd heard another person talk. He was so accustomed to only hearing his own breathing and heartbeat that he couldn't even recognize this sound called a voice. Which brings us now to the heartfelt final moments of the episode. Heartfelt? All of which was adapted pretty much perfectly. So that was pretty much it for episode 32. I still think it was pretty fucked up when he laughed like that, even if it was directed to himself. If I was Oto, I'd be like, damn, bro, you said you're my friend, you're fucking laughing at me. I understand that's not what happened, but like, Jesus, it definitely looks wrong. So that was pretty much it for episode 32. As you now know, there was definitely quite a few subtle things worth taking note of here. So hopefully you enjoyed gaining more context behind these riveting episodes of ReZero. And if you did, then feel free to leave a like or comment so that you can help the video to do better. <laughs> the video to do better. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's going on here. Hmm, the imagery. <laughs> can you connect the dots? Mm, I think I can connect the dots. But I think the most important shit in this cut content probably has to do with how Garfield didn't uh, make like Subaru sussed out because just of the miasma, but more than that, right? The actual lack of emotions and his kind of carefree attitude in handling his problems because he's so numb to it and he's trying to do this as fast as possible, right? That I didn't really think about, but it makes a lot more sense. And what else is really important? Um, the vehicle stuff, I guess uh, the fucking gospel being actually hidden in the stool that we didn't see in the anime because it just seemed like it just showed up on the ground right uh what else is super important no i think that is pretty much the most important shit along with you know people being suspicious of subaru because every loop and stuff like that but at the end of the day what do we have to do we need to clear the sanctuary and we need to then bring our powerful ally from the sanctuary to the mansion and overcome elsa and the beast tamer but everything hinges on Amelia's success. And right now, that shit is something that we are kind of powerless about. Like, what can we possibly do other than just be emotional support for Amelia to overcome the trial? That is the biggest limiting factor that I don't have answers to. But that's it from me. I'll see you next time.